Today we're going to make a fantastic twisty cone fidget in Tinkercad. So let's get cracking. We are going to start by typing bit.ly slash cone how to and pressing enter. This takes us to the fantastic design by ZDP189. Once again, if you just want to print this, you can use this link. Of course, we're going to learn the how to and it's set to copy and tinker. So don't forget the golden rule of Tinkercad. Give a reaction before you copy and tinker. This results in you having an exact copy of the original project along with the epic notes that ZDP has included to explain it. The first thing we got is a box, but it's been modified using the parameters. I'm going to highlight once again that if you drag the handles, you break these parameters. So the steps that ZDP followed where we went out here and we did 1, 10, 2, 20, and 2. Watch how this changes. 1 gives us the awesome radius. There's the 10. Of course, this is a 2. And the height is a 2 as well. If we hit F for fit view, you can see that is all of a sudden a very smooth shape, which helps us build this. I'm going to move this one over here. I'm going to set it to the color blue. So now let's bring this shape over here with Control D. I'm going to make sure that it's far enough away that it's not running into that shape. And we need to rotate one degree and we need to rise one tenth of a degree. To make sure it's at one tenth, I'm going to set it at one tenth. Now, control D, rotate the one degree. Notice we move away from the shape. There's our one degree. Let go, do control up arrow to get the rise. And then we can do control D again and again as we're trying to make that rotation that is over on the other side. You got to hold this forever to get to a 181 rotations. I'm making sure that it goes past what would be the level of the start. You can see there it's getting close and there it finally did. So now I can let go. And if we check, you'll see that I have 191 shapes. So we simply need to delete the last 10. The easiest way I think to do that is just do it one chunk at a time. Always grab and double check. If it doesn't give you a large number, notice they could have been missing. So now I'm at 186. So let's delete five more. There's one, two, three, four, and five. That would be the 181. And as you can see, those are the exact smooth shape. Now the next step is super important. It is to make it a shape to save complexity. To do that, you click over here. You switch to the Your Creations and you hit Create Shape to save it. Now I did this and it took more than six minutes. So friends, ZDP left us the single shape. Let's use this to create our shape. Once again, you simply hit Create Shape wait for it to arrive and this one is complex as well but you can see it arrived relatively fast and i'm going to call this twisty solid and i'm going to save the shape with that one completed we can move to this step right here i'm going to show you the step super quick it is simply scale the z-axis by 300 percent let's bring out our new shape just because we saved this notice we did have to wait for it to appear and it does take a minute to arrive into our project. If you get impatient, you can add more accidentally. I have done that more than once or twice. And then we're gonna scale Z with a percent. This is a real cool technique. Notice instead of a number, I simply type 300 and the percent symbol, press enter and bam, it has now made that shape the correct size for our twisty solid over here. To make these, once again, there's a note and it says duplicate and rotate 45 degrees until you have four copies. I'll just move this over here and show you. Once again, control D, rotate 45 degrees, which is two clicks, or you can hold shift and it's one click. Let go and do control D again and again until you have the required four copies. That is how you make the solid. Friends, of course, the next step is to come over here and do the same thing. I'll show you real quickly. Here, we increased the hole, so there's a gap all the way around it. We went 1.1, and then 2.2, 20, 
20.2 and 2.2. So we added a tenth in every direction of the shape. Of course, there are 181 of these. You can see right here, it was made into a shape, same 300% and then the same patterns. Once again, I did the steps to save this piece so I can use it in any project. I do want to also let you know if you ever have more of these than you want, you can click here and delete them. So friends, that's how the twisty cone was made. This is the incredible surface. Taking a Tinkercad project and getting it that smooth is freaking amazing. Now the next part is to turn it into a twisty cone. We're gonna do that with another bit.ly. Once again, created by ZDP. This time we're gonna type bit.ly slash ZDP cone and press enter. Now, of course, ZDP sets everything to copy and tinker, so don't forget the golden rule of Tinkercad. Give him a reaction before you copy and tinker. This time when it loads, you can see there were two cones. If you're watching closely, you can see our twisted shape being cut with that inverse hole. We could, of course, print these right now, but instead I want to teach you how it works. So real quickly, I do not want to lose these, so I'm going to do Control D to make copies. Now, because these are copy and tinker, we can simply hit ungroup to see that inside there is our twisty shape with a hole that is cutting like a cone. I'm going to do shift nudge to move that to the side so you can see it better. Notice it is also cutting off the three millimeters that was mentioned in the tutorial. I'm gonna real quickly ungroup this again. I'm gonna do shift nudge to move it across, one, two, three again. And now we can take a look at this sweet cone. Notice the rounded top. Watch how this happens. I'm gonna hit undo. Notice it was a normal cone, but it has got this sweet shape right here. I'm gonna hide this so you can see the trick. It is another inverse hole that uses the half sphere from right here inside of it. It was set to the exact measurements that it would fit the edge of the cone and then bingo, once grouped, you've got a rounded cone instead of the one that is truncated at the top. Once again, control G to group. There is your sweet rounding. Of course, because this is an inverse hole, it needs to be set as a hole. And then we can shift nudge this back. There are the three clicks. When I group those two, making sure I don't grab the one behind it, it would have been slicker if I'd have done top view to grab those. Once again, two shapes and group. And when this finishes grouping, we need to switch it to the hole that then trims this cone to get the awesome shape that makes the project work. All right, so let's get this ready for 3D printing. I'm gonna quickly grab all these parts and I'm going to delete them. Remember, there are 181 shapes times three times two. It's a lot of stuff in this project. Now I am gonna ungroup this again because I do like the idea of showing you this. We don't have to group the holes before we send them. If I select this chunk and I choose export, I'm gonna export as an STL. Notice it exports extremely fast. I'm gonna call this UG cones for ungrouped and I'm gonna save it. And then I'm gonna do the same thing here. I'm gonna ungroup this hole, grab those two parts and export them that way instead. STL, note this time it is an inverse hole, so there is a slight pause, but bam, we are ready to save, and this time I'm going to call it UG Cones, and I'm going to put a 2 after it, and hit Save Changes. I'm going to print these on my Bamboo Labs printer. Once again, it's going to be a brand new project. Let's quickly hit Add. Let's grab our two parts. I'm going to hit Open and I do want them to be a single object, multiple parts. Now, before we print this, I'm gonna change the size just a little bit. I found at this 52 millimeter size, it was a little too tight. So with uniform scale, I'm gonna just change this to 60 millimeters and press enter. That makes the gaps a little bit larger as well, which worked really well in my prior test. Now to print this today, I'm gonna to use the 0.2 standard, and then I earlier printed a set of gray and a set of blue, so I ended up with two fidgets. If we hit slice plate, that took more than 51 minutes, and I had to do it twice, you know, once for each color. So let me show you another technique. If we go back to prepare, I'm gonna right click on this, and I'm going to split it into objects. 
Now I can click on the second one, right click, and I'm gonna change the filament to blue. Could have also used the paint tools. Those are fantastic. Real quickly, let me show you with it set up like this. If we slice the plate, we are all of a sudden looking at an eight hour print, which I am not a fan of. That's because it switches colors on every layer. So let's go back to prepare and I'm gonna show you another technique. We're simply gonna go under the print to the others, if you don't have advanced on, turn it on and then we're gonna do a print sequence change to buy object. Now you'll note it does have an error because they're too close together. To fix that, all we do is use auto arrange. I've got auto rotate and I'm gonna just hit arrange. Bingo, it spaces them out. Now when we slice plates, it's gonna print all of the gray one, then all of the blue one and the entire project takes an hour and 11 minutes, which is a better gig in my opinion. Of course, you can pick whichever strategy you want. Right now, let me show you how they turned out. And bingo, here we are. Once again, huge shout out to ZDP for making this fantastic Tinkercad cone fidget. Friends, a quick word of thanks to my supporters on Patreon. Love how that group is growing. Don't forget you can learn all about it with the bit.ly up above or the link in the description. Finally, friends, I want to thank you for watching. Don't forget every time you hit that like button, share a video or add a comment down below or even hit subscribe. You're helping HL Mod Tech get just a little bit bigger, which absolutely makes my day. Friends, have a glorious day and keep tinkering.